The door opened and Hisoka tensed. A teacup clattered faintly against a saucer, and steam carried the first whisper of steeping tea. His favorite blend. Jacques. Hisoka quickly pushed aside his blankets, but no, it was Romiko. They shuffled awkwardly forward, bumping the door shut with one hip. They were resplendent in a new tunic and wearing, of all things, embroidered hearth slippers. They are a gift from Catalan, Romiko announced happily. He asked a friend to make them for me. Very nice. There is a pair for you as well, since your hearth is my home. Hisoka couldn't argue, but matching hearth slippers implied, ah, well, they could imply any number of things. However, the underlying meaning was one of belonging, and Romiko had stated it plainly enough. The two of them shared a home. Thank you. Romiko came forward, cup and saucer in both hands, focused on not spilling a drop. Hisoka reached out with both hands, thinking to rescue the cup. But then Romiko said, I met your Michael. Hisoka flinched backward, and cup and saucer jumbled to the floor, bouncing upon the rug, staining it with splashed tea. He is beautiful, Romiko said, dropping to their knees on the rug, blotting at the spilled tea with their sleeve. He is not mine. They hummed in a way that begged to differ. You say that about me, too. Hisoka felt chastised, but also stubborn. Romiko looked up, their expression serene. I asked your Michael to visit. He was glad to agree. I, why would you do that? Because you will let in his brightness. A point Hisoka wished he could argue, but he'd never been able to resist Michael, or refuse him. Taking the boy for his apprentice at Ingress Academy had been a shocking departure after centuries without an apprentice. An embarrassingly selfish impulse, especially at a time when he should have been fully devoting himself to carrying off the emergence. Back then, he'd been intrigued by some of Michael's little habits, especially his sigil craft. He'd suspected there was another mentor, but he hadn't pressed for details lest he lose Michael's trust. Only in hindsight had the foxy overtones come into focus. And then Arjun's need had become Hisoka's concern, for Michael's sake. He will be here for your sake, Romiko said, as if they knew Hisoka's thoughts. Because Hisoka's needs had become their concern? And yet here Hisoka sat, pretending not to see, like a small child who believes that closing their eyes makes them safe from discovery. Michael would never know how much Hisoka might have sacrificed to keep him. Conversely, Michael's good opinion had buoyed Hisoka during those last, worst years when the emergence kept hitting roadblocks and snagging in red tape. After long weeks of special sessions and treaty talks, he'd tumble into his students' waiting arms to be scolded and tended and tucked in. He probably saved the world. Romiko stood and reached with both hands, framing Hisoka's face. I do not think he is finished. Let him scold you and tend you and tuck you in. Hisoka wondered if the reason he couldn't refuse was because he wanted so badly to see Michael, or because Romiko had also become someone else Hisoka couldn't refuse.